Joe Agostinelli, Social Media Manager at Greenway Health, and this is Putting Possibility into Practice, the podcast from Greenway Health. And on this episode, I'm joined by a few guests. I welcome in Tracy Grabarczyk, uh, Providia Health Partners. We'll discuss all that Providia does. Uh, they exist to empower private practice physicians so that they can continue to deliver high-quality clinical care and build strong patient relationships. They help create an environment that allows practices to adapt to and benefit from evolving healthcare changes. And we'll also talk to Melissa Mitchell, the COO, and Jenny Williamson, the Intergy Clinical Coordinator for HealthLink. HealthLink follows a patient-centered medical home model to serve more than 26,000 patients throughout the northern Indiana area and provide services in primary care, dental care, behavioral health care, vision care, pediatrics, and obstetrics. This whole body approach is a product of HealthLink's commitment to a more holistic view. So we'll hear from all of them. And first, I bring in Tracy Grabarczyk of Providia Health Partners. So let's talk a little bit about what Providia Health Partners does. And Tracy, I thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Um, well, Providia Health Partners is an independent physician practice that was founded a few years ago in response to the changing healthcare environment. Um, what we noticed as an independent physician practice ourselves was it was becoming increasingly more difficult to deal with some of the administrative burdens that are put upon most independent private practices in today's healthcare environment. So uh, we formulated an independent uh, physician provider group that operates under a single tax ID. Um, each of the practices can operate somewhat independently, but they have a lot of administrative and EMR support from um, the Central Billing and Management Office. Embracing the uh, future of healthcare, uh, what does that mean to Providia and, and what does that mean really for patients? Well, I think um, what we're seeing obviously is a shift more of patients being more consumers in healthcare, and obviously they're carrying a lot more of the burden of the cost of healthcare. So um, the difficulty on the physician side obviously is continuing to um, provide high quality care for low cost and um, lots of times providing that care in with less resources and less time. So. Um, part of the future of healthcare is becoming more adaptable and somewhat open-minded to alternative um, methods for care delivery, um, for payment models that allow you to be reimbursed based on value over fee-for-service. In this ever-changing healthcare landscape, what are the key things that providers need to keep in mind in, in maintaining their independence? I think it becomes challenging as you know we see our margins shrink, uh, revenues are down, and um, the demand, the work is up. It's you know as Tracy said, it's harder for patients to receive the care that they're striving for, um, given some of the constraints we have as providers of of care. So I think partnering together in in an arrangement like Providia offers gives these independent physicians that strength in numbers that they need in order to remain independent and still deliver care to their patients. Um, you know, that's just one piece of the landscape that's changing faster than we can almost keep up with as independent practices and partnering together seems to be a way to control that. And one of the hot topics that we hear so much about here in 2018 continues to be MACRA. How can providers stay on top of everything happening with regulatory changes? Well, MACRA tends to be one of the largest actual administrative bur burdens that we've seen, I think, in healthcare today. And part of the problem is it's a moving target. So, um, you know, we're trying to deal with advancing care information and um, more collaboration between hospitals and healthcare centers, independent practices, um, and obviously engaging the patient in in their healthcare and overall health outcomes. So, um, some of the challenges with MACRA obviously are time. Um, providers are having to spend more time with each patient to try to achieve what needs to be done to obviously meet some of these macro requirements. Um, you know, Greenway Health has been a great partner in that sense of the word because um, we've been able to adapt many things that we do within the practice when seeing a patient every day using the Greenway Health platforms. Let's go back a little bit um, more about Providia Health Partners. How many practices are we talking about? How many providers? How many locations? 
Uh, currently, we have uh, three practices with uh, 20 providers. Um, we have six office locations in two states. So we've kind of spread our footprint a little bit in the, over the last year and a half and you know, continue to grow wherever we see the opportunity to help groups like ours you know, stay independent. And probably the biggest challenge now is that staying independent. So maybe somebody just you know, on the fence right now of maybe staying independent or not staying independent. What advice would you give to them to stay independent? You know, it's a hard decision, I think, for physician owners and, and even, you know, new graduates, depending on which end of their career they're at. Um, I, th I think it's easy to try and almost give in, give in and throw in the towel to selling your practice or going into an employment arrangement. You know, being an independent provider group isn't easy. You know, it's hard work right now, but gaining the support from a, a team such as ours within Providia, I think, makes it manageable and still allows providers to give care and, and take care of their patients the way they intended to. And thank you, Tracy. Just a reminder, you can follow Providia Health on Twitter, the Twitter handle at Providia Health. That's P-R-O-V-I-D-E-A-H-E-A-L-T-H. And thank you, Tracy. And I bring in Melissa Mitchell and Jenny Williamson. Now, Melissa is the COO of HealthLink. Jenny Williamson is the Intergy Clinical Coordinator. And we'll talk about all the great stuff that HealthLink is doing in the community as they serve more than 26,000 patients, as I mentioned earlier, throughout the northern Indiana area. Tell us a little bit about your practice, how large of a staff, and, and how many locations uh, you have. We have about, like you said, 26,000 patients and growing. Um, a little bit about us is we have eight sites. We have, in addition to that, two telehealth school-based sites in a mobile unit. We have about 65 different providers across our entire organization. And like you mentioned, we really are about serving the whole patient. One of the common phrases our CEO uses is, we put the neck back in the body. So for many years, a lot of medical practices would treat everyone um, on their chronic conditions, that type of thing. But we also include mental health, we include vision, and those type of things, so that there's no part of our services that aren't treating the entire person. And something I just want to talk a little bit more about, um, in addition to all of your locations, and you mentioned you've also gone mobile, literally, with the uh, HealthLink mobile medical dental van. Tell us how that works as opposed to an in-office visit, and what type of services are available? Sure. For our mobile unit, it's actually very versatile because it does both medical and dental. We use that to really operate at which point the greatest need is in a community. So it might be that we roll into schools and we can provide dental care or on the same day or a different day, we can also provide physical or sports exams as well as immunizations. We can also serve the community in time of need. We have one of our locations that was in the middle of a lead crisis. There was a bunch of lead that was found in the area. FEMA came out, it was a really big deal. We were able to go and take our mobile unit into some of the government housing units and provide lead tests and help people to know if they needed additional and further screening based on us being able to come to them. It's a really good way when people can't go to get health care, we can bring it to them. Great. And with multiple locations, and we just discussed the, uh, the mobile unit, how important was it to find an EHR that can be adapted to fit the needs of HealthLink? So when we're talking about multiple sites, which are similar to multiple organizations using the same setup, it's really important to have an EHR that has a robust back end where you do all the setup. And it's important to have functionality that will meet the basic needs quickly to be able to treat the entire patient. For example, I love the robustness of the reminders in Entergy because it's a quick and simple way for our providers to not only see a patient for a sore throat, but also catch patients up on their immunizations or any of their preventive care at the same time. And implementing EHRs is, is nothing new for you, Jenny. Uh, how many practices have you implemented with EHRs, and how does Intergy compare? We were discussing that a little bit in the, the week leading up to this. 
So I think I'm about at 80 at this point, 80 practices that I've done implementation. And in the last few years, people are changing from their first EHR to their second EHR. So they're looking for more. And I'm really surprised that Entergy is not one of the top five sellers in the country because this EHR is very robust. It can be used for multiple specialties um, and it can be used across a broad spectrum of needs. The reporting in it is to me vital. Many EHRs fall down on reporting and with MIPS and MACRA, we don't participate in those because we're FHQC, did I say it right? F Q <laughs> F Q H C. I always get that wrong, sorry. Um, but we have a lot of more reporting than most practices. But practices are now coming into that. And so they need something that has a good base built and a good analytics program built on top of that base. Energy should be selling like hotcakes because of that. Now, as a not-for-profit organization, you can also apply for and receive grants from foundations. How does the EHR contribute to receiving grants? So we've just recently discovered that secret. So when we apply for a grant, we sit down with our grant staff and we talk about what's in the EHR that can be used for reporting for this grant. So a lot of times, we build our grant application based on what already exists. Other times, we say, well, we could create this and make it a simple reporting system. So our grant funding, once we have a grant allotted, is a simple report once we've done it. But we do the prep work on the beginning, and we do the build on the beginning, which is the secret. And I think Melissa and I think Jenny, reminder that you can follow HealthLink on Twitter. Their Twitter handle is at HealthLink. That's H-E-A-L-T-H-L-I-N-C. And you can also like their Facebook page. It's www.facebook.com slash HealthLink. H-E-A-L-T-H-L-I-N-C. So I thank all my guests today, Tracy Grubarczyk, who you heard from earlier from Providia Health, and also Melissa Mitchell and Jenny Williamson, who you just heard from at HealthLink. I thank them for taking the time out of their day to join me on the podcast. A reminder that you can subscribe to our podcast on SoundCloud or on the Apple iTunes Store or on Google Play. I'm Joe Agustinelli, the social media manager at Greenway Health, and this has been another episode of Putting Possibility into Practice, the podcast from Greenway Health. For more on Greenway Health, visit our website at www.greenwayhealth.com. <music>